Should you focus your business on a particular niche or niche? That's a question I hear a lot. And I've noticed that even if I say, yes, you should niche, people resist it. There are three specific reasons that people resist niching. And so today we're gonna dig into them. What are those three specific reasons? What are the concerns that people have that make them resist niching? We're gonna address those concerns. If you are thinking about niching, my goal is to help you get clear on why you should and how it will benefit you and your business. If we haven't met before, I do want to say hello. My name is Susan. I help introverted business owners thrive in an extroverted marketing world. And niching is one piece of what will help you succeed when you promote your business. So let's get started. We're going to talk about what niching is, why we should niche, and then we're going to talk about the three reasons why people resist niching. And we're going to get into the thought process behind that. Tucked in there will be the benefits of niching and the mindset or the way that we should be thinking about niching as we consider how to bring it into our business. So what is niching? When a person niches or decides on a niche for their business, they're selecting a specialization or an area to focus on. In other words, they're focusing on a particular audience or on a specific set of skills or capabilities that they have. So why do we niche? We do this for a few reasons. We differentiate ourselves from the competition. We help our prospects get clear on what we do and whether or not we can help them. And we focus our marketing. Our niche helps us understand what we do talk about and what we don't talk about. Niching can be incredibly helpful for your business. It helps you focus on what matters and helps you trim out what does not matter. It also helps create clarity for your audience. It helps them understand what you do, whether or not you can help them and whether or not you are a good match for them. As I said at the beginning, a lot of people resist niching. So let's talk about the three reasons people resist. Honestly, I've struggled with this too, so I'm gonna be bringing you examples from my own business. So let's get into it. First, people are concerned about leaving someone out. You may feel this way if you don't like to say no, especially if in saying no, you're missing out on some opportunities. An opportunity to help someone, an opportunity to fill up your client list, a way to make money, and a chance to grow your business. Are those true concerns? Is it valid? Yes, it's valid. They're valid concerns, but that's not really how it works. Let's put this into perspective. A client once said to me, all humans can use what I offer. And while you know, that might be true. She was a life coach. Very likely that's possible. It's also not possible. None of us can help five-year-olds and 25-year-olds and 50-year-olds and 80-year-olds. The problems on all those levels are completely different. That's why in the medical field, we have pediatrics, primary care, and geriatric care. If you try to help everybody, you spread yourself so thin and you have to learn something new and specialize on something new with every single person. And that is a waste of time and energy that you don't have. Another example of this is when I started my business, I used to build websites. And when I was doing that, I needed to help people get started on their email platforms as well or convert their email platform over to the new website. And I found that I was having to learn every single email platform that was out there. And that was just exhausting and honestly, a waste of my time. Instead, I picked one email platform. I went with Constant Contact and said, if you want to work with me, you're working with Constant Contact. And that was my specialty. And what was wonderful about that was I got to know Constant Contact really, really well. So that if a person had a problem with Constant Contact, I could help them with it much more deeply because I knew it that well. So it served me to take part of my niche and be like, you know, when it comes to email marketing, I work with Constant Contact and it made a big difference. And to go back to the big picture of this, as a small business, you literally cannot help all people. You can't help somebody if they're not open to your approach or style. You can't help people who don't have the problem that you help people with. And you cannot, maybe don't want, to help people that you don't get along with well. And you don't get along with everyone. I don't get along with everyone. That's part of the human condition. And that's okay. When you niche your business, this is your opportunity to say, these are the people that I get along well with. These are the people that I like to help. These are the people I want to help. So that when I pick up the phone or get on Zoom, I like the person that I'm talking to and I enjoy working with them and I enjoy my business. Niching is an opportunity. So I invite you to give yourself permission to leave somebody out. And even better, 
Get clear on who you leave out and on the other side, who you bring in. And don't worry about those people that you leave out. Somebody else will help them because they'll be a better fit. So our mantra around here is it's okay to leave somebody out. Say it with me. It's okay to leave somebody out. That will enable us to work only with the people we enjoy. Reason number two for why people resist niching. I don't want to limit myself to a specific group of people or a single problem. And I totally know how this feels. You say out loud who it is you help, then you envision people who fall outside the circle that you know you can also help. Are you closing the door to an opportunity? And I want to reassure you that the people in your niche are all the opportunity you need. They just need to find you, but they won't find you if you don't tell them how to specifically. Here's how I think about it. I can go to Walmart to buy an office chair. I can go to Staples to buy an office chair. I can go to the office chair store to buy an office chair. If I have a bad back and I'm uncomfortable and I need a specific type of office chair that's going to help me and maybe I'm not sure what that type is, I'm not going to Walmart or Staples. I'm going to the office chair store. You are not Walmart. You're the office chair store. And I've been in this situation. I was talking to a group of people. We were all sharing what we each do. And there were like 10 of us in the room. And I said, I help introverts thrive in an extroverted marketing world. And then we talked about social media. We talked about email. We talked about websites. And by the time we were done, like those, there were nine extroverts and one introvert in the group. And the nine extroverts were like, you can't just help introverts. You have to help us too. But there's that one introvert in the room who's not saying as much because there's so much else going on. That's the person I work with. And there are so many people in the world that help the extroverts. They are going to get plenty of help. They don't need me. That introvert who's trying to figure out how to market their business authentically, they need me. So I need a niche so that they can find me. And so I've refined my business to help them find me. And my marketing messaging falls in line with that. The third reason that people resist niching is... But I want to do a bunch of different things. I'm multi-passionate. How do I choose? And the thought process there is I can do a bunch of different things. Why should I narrow and how should I narrow? How can I possibly choose from all these things that I love and want to do? I identify with this one because I am an entrepreneur that changes her mind regularly and I get bored easily. If this is your concern, this is what I want you to know. Niching is not permanent. It's for the moment. That moment might be three months long or three years long, but it does not mean you'll never do something else again. Niching is for right now. How are you serving them right now? I've changed my niche in the course of my business four or five times easily. And that's the joy of the small business is to be able to shift as the tide does to go where the opportunities lie. We just can't shift on a whim and we can't be all places at once. It's important to focus. If you try to do all the things right now, you're not focused. You're trying to learn everything at once. You're not going to get anywhere. It slows you down. It puts you on your back foot and it burns through your energy and your time. If you're always learning, you cannot excel. For example, I mentioned earlier that I used to build websites as part of my business. That's when I first started. And email marketing was a small part of that. And I had focused on constant contact. I then shifted my niche and worked just on email marketing. And I worked alongside constant contact as a partner doing presentations and helping people learn how to use constant contact. After four or five years, I evolved into a new niche where I was focusing on something larger, marketing strategy. And email marketing is just a small piece of that. And I've also expanded so I actually work with either Constant Contact or Active Campaign. And now when I work with email marketing, it's really about how to fit it into your marketing strategy. I also still teach how to use it, but that's a small piece of a bigger picture. So my niche now is marketing strategy for introverts. So I've evolved with my niche over time. And that's what I'm suggesting is that You pick a niche for now, then grow or evolve into another one. Maybe it's not working or maybe you get bored and then you move to another one. And hopefully they're related so you can bring the same audience with you. But it's okay to change over time. It's just not as useful to try to do all the things right now. 
And with that, there are two things that I want you to know that I think will help. One, niching is about your marketing, not your services. You use niching to help you focus your message. You market to a niche and then you help whoever responds to that message. It's important to keep in mind when you try to talk to everyone, you talk to no one because it dilutes your message and people don't know if you're there to help them or not. When you have niched well, and I'm interchanging niche and niche, I hope that's making sense. But when you niche well, it makes your message clear so that the people in your audience think, how is she reading my mind like this? How does she know what I'm thinking? When you are specific and you are clear, the right people will respond to your message. And the other thing that I want you to take away from this is you can always change your niche. You are not locked in. We are not writing in cement. We're writing in HTML. We're writing in ideas. So we can change them when we need to and when we want to. Just don't change it too often. So should you niche your business? In my experience, I believe you should. Oh, an honest, oh my God. Oh my God, my glasses have been crooked this whole time.